Hey everybody, welcome to my Subtandy video where I'm going to install a five and a quarter 360 KB disk drive into my Tandy 1000 TX. For those of you who watch my channel know that I got this machine back in June 2021 as a part trade, part donation from Ron from Ron's computer videos. There is a link to his channel down in the description. So if you haven't checked out his channel, uh, you should do that. He's also one of the uh, founders of Marchintosh. So if you like Macintosh, Apple machines, another reason to check out his channel. So yeah, let's get into this. We're going to do this uh, ad hoc mode. To put this drive in, you can see I've got the, the drive right here. And let me show you that drive. It's actually uh, a really nice drive. It is a TIAC branded drive. I'm doing this one-handed here, so let's... Uh, Grab it here. It's a TIAC drive. Model FD55 B as in boy, V as in Victor 75U. So if you're wanting to add a five and a quarter drive into your Tandy 1000 TX, this is the drive you're gonna wanna look for. It's gonna go right here in this slot above the three and a half inch drive. You'll notice the uh, faceplate here. It's not exactly a match. I might need to retrobrite that at some point, uh, but for now it's close enough and I'm gonna stick that in here. And how I know this is the model to use is I've got friends that have uh, external Tandy uh, five and quarter drives and, and that's the same model they've got in there. So that's how I was able to determine that. But to do this upgrade mod, I need to take the case off. So I need to take that screw out and that screw out, and then I can slide this off. So let me grab a screwdriver and we'll do that real quick. All right, we're back. I've got the top off the Tandy 1000 TX. And as you can see right here, here is the bay, the drive bay where the five and a quarter drive will go. I'm going to need to remove this little cage bracket here to get the drive in mounted and hook up the ribbon cable because it's pretty tight quarters in there. But to get this off, there's a few screws. Got to take this screw out right there. Uh, so you got a screw there, screw there. And there are two screws here and here. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And when I take those off, I can pull this out and get the drive mounted in there real nice like. While we've got this open, let's take a little peek inside. You can see my real-time clock. I installed that in a previous video on my channel. I'll link to that as well as the math coprocessor. There is the real-time clock. There is the math coprocessor. All right, let's take this uh, drive bracket out and get the floppy mounted. I've got the uh, drive bay bracket mounting bracket out. I'm going to show you something here on the side. You see what looks like water drippings or something. And when I opened up this machine previously to do the math coprocessor and real-time clock, I tried to clean this off with Windex alcohol, and it's just not coming off. Um, if you have any ideas on what might take that off other than sanding, uh, let me know. It's not rusted or anything, but uh, it's kind of ugly, but it's inside. You don't see it, so whatever. Um, but yeah. Here is the back where you can see the ribbon cable. This will plug into the five and a quarter floppy drive and it is keyed. You'll notice there's the three and a half inch drive and there is no uh, power cord plugged in here. And that is because the three and a half inch drive gets power from the actual ribbon cable when it is uh, plugged in right here. But the five and a quarter drive will need power with this Molex connector from the power supply. Oh yeah, and you can see my uh, CF IDE hard drive right there as well. So let me grab the floppy drive and we'll get that in here and see what happens. I've got the five and a quarter drive loosely fit inside the uh, bracket. I have got the ribbon cable, uh, it's plugged in. And then I realized I need to add some screws. So I got my jar O screws right there that you can see. 
lots of computer screws. So I'm going to open that up real quick, find uh, three to four screws, you know, one here, one here, two on the other side, or at least one on this side and one on the other side, you know, just to hold the drive if I've got the proper screws, which I'm sure I do because look at that jar. It's like a five pound jar of, of screws here. Lots of screws. All right, let's uh, find some screws. After a half an hour of searching in that big old jar of screws, I found three screws that I needed for this. Went ahead and mounted one there, one there, and you're wondering, why not four? Why not four? Well, let's turn this over here and we'll show you why. On this side, there was only one hole in this bracket to mount it. So, I mean, it's in there. Two on the other side, one here, we're good to go. And here's more of that stuff. Both sides have that, that drippy stuff on there. The more I look at it, I want to get it off of there. But there it is. There is the five and a quarter on top, the three and a half on the bottom. You can notice the color is not exact, but I don't think it looks too bad. When the weather gets better, I'll uh, probably retro it to see if I can get it a little bit lighter. All right, let's uh, rough fit it in here, hook everything up, and make sure it works before we button up the whole machine. We are now in sit-down mode. As you can see, I've got the five and a quarter drive installed. I've got the drive bay enclosure rough fitted. I mean, it's pretty much where it needs to go. I just haven't mounted any any screws or anything yet in case things don't work, which I'm sure it's going to work. It's pretty straightforward. So let's go ahead and turn on the machine. And what we're going to be looking for is the seek light on the A drive, the seek light on the B drive, and then we'll test out the actual drive in the machine. So let's go ahead and reach over here and power it on. Let's watch those drives. There's A, there's B. All right, the machine is booting. All right, we are at the C prompt. Let me grab a brand new Tandy branded uh, single-sided certified floppy disk. Makes sense, right? It's a Tandy machine. Let's use a Tandy floppy. So let me go ahead and pull this out of here. Like so, we're going to stick it in the drive. And now we're going to type for mat B colon. See it right there. We're going to go ahead and press uh, enter. Insert disk into drive B. Disk is in drive B. Press enter when ready. And, okay, it's verified it's a 360K disk. Activity light is working. So that is awesome. It is formatting the disk. I'm going to go ahead and pause right here. We're not going to let you wait for this in real time. We'll be right back. Two hours later. And we're back. Format complete. Enter volume label. Enter for none. And look at that, everything's good. No bad sectors, everything's nice. Format another, no. We'll go ahead and switch to the B drive. Type DIR, there's not gonna be anything on there, but file not found. So yeah, press F3, Dur. okay, we're gonna just show you here, press enter. All right, that is a success. So let me get the screws in and uh, we'll do a little more testing. I've got the screws in and before I put the cover on, I wanted to address one thing in the machine. Uh, if you notice back here, I am missing a slot cover. I am needing a Tandy 1000 TX or SX case slot cover. This is a TX, but the SX slot covers are exactly the same. They are proprietary to these machines. So if you have one or know anyone that's got one for sale or trade or they want to donate it, 
let me know in the comments or reach out to me directly. My contact info is on my channel about page. And now let's get this cover back on. Well, I've got the case lid back on and it's looking good. I'll show you that in a second. But something that I realized I did not record footage for was removing this faceplate. If you recall, the faceplate was in here. It was mounted from the back side of the uh, the cover. And there were these little posts uh, that are behind here that stick up where you slide this over on both sides. There's one there and one there just pushes down. And then there's these little metal clips that went over the little post to kind of lock it in place. And that was a pain in the butt to get those off. And I can show you, I had a little bit of aggravation. You'll see this side's all nice. That was the second side that I did. But the first side, plastic is all cut into. And that was because I was using my needle nose pliers here and I was twisting that thing back and forth, back and forth to get it off. But I got it off and it's on the inside. So if I was to ever put this back on or if somebody needed a, a face plate for their machine, I've got one. So let's check this out. Look at how nice that is. Again, the color isn't a perfect match, but at some point I will retro bright it and we'll pan back here and give a quick shout out to my patrons. These are the folks that support me on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash geek with social skills. If you would like to support my work, thank you for watching. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't give it a thumbs down twice. And stay tuned for more videos with my Tandy 1000 TX and some additional Subtandy videos as well. Have a great day. We'll see you soon.